Hi, everybody. Welcome. We're back. Uh, Star Citizen Live. I'm your host, Jared Huckabee. And uh, this is our weekly live stream where we take a, about an hour out of the end of our week and we hang out with some of our developers. Uh, we talk about the stuff they're working on. Sometimes we ask to answer questions from the community. Sometimes we have somebody on just to get to know them and learn a little bit about their history. Sometimes we do an AI sprint report like we did the last episode a couple weeks ago. Uh, and sometimes I don't write an intro and I just wing it. Joining us on the show this week are two members from our esteemed Mission Features team. We've got Ed and Elliot. Elliot and Elliot, how are you doing? Yeah, Hello. good. Yep. So, uh, you're no strangers to SCL. You're one of the few uh, people who've actually had a, uh, a return visit here uh, to the spaceship. You know, we've only been on the spaceship for you know, X number of months now, so we haven't actually had a lot of people cycle back through. So you're actually, I, th I think you're one of the first people ever to return. I'm on it three times. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. Well, uh, no, wait, this is Elliot's third time? David, Th can you confirm third that? Third time. Uh, uh, yeah. Oh, never mind, no, bye. Oh. Ed, just switch. <laughs> Uh, because every show is somebody's first show, let's take, a, let's take a little bit of time before we get into the questions. Introduce yourselves, tell everybody who you are and what you do for Star Citizen. And, and we'll start with you since you've done it three times, so you should be a pro by now. Go ahead. I'm going to fool a bit. Uh, hi, uh, I'm uh, Ellie Moby. I am a lead designer on the Mission Feature team. I make missions and we make systems revolving missions and me and Ed work together a lot of the time. Yep. Uh, that's me. There you go. And Ed? Okay, yeah. My name is Edward Fuller, and I am also a lead designer on the Mission Features, mission features team. And uh, obviously, I work alongside Elliot, and there are other designers who report to us and make missions with us. And uh, yeah, I mean, we'll go into all the details when we get to okay. our questions, I guess. Okay. And a lot of us were at Bar Citizen in Manchester. Yeah? How, how was that? I didn't get to make really it. Really fun. Met a lot of people, met some content creators. Um, just a really fun environment and it just helps to motivate you more because people come in they're like oh my god what you do is so cool can i have a picture and you're like I just make video games for a living yeah that was what uh not, not last weekend it was weekend before that something like that yeah, yeah. i can't remember i uh <laughs> drank too much yeah no I, you know I, i've been here uh, uh this is actually day 365 today that i've been here wow. uh, in the uk so oh. i hit my one year tomorrow and I'd been waiting for a Manchester Bar Citizen. Uh, yeah. I've been waiting for a Manchester Bar Citizen the entire time here. And they finally do it, and it's when I'm on vacation. Yeah. Out of the country. And I'm like... Mm. It, it, was, it was really nice. So, like, I, when I was there, I met... Um, when I'm in Twitch chats, there's a person in there all the time called uh, Slough Dog. And I was walking back from the toilets, and this guy looks at me and points. And he's like, Elliot. I was like, oh, hello. And he's like, I'm Slough Dog. I was like, oh, my God, hello. <laughs> because... Uh, he also tests on Evo Kai, so we see a lot of his reports and we speak to him quite a bit as well. Yeah, we, I think most of us who have been to a, at least two bar citizens have a story of meeting a backer in the coming from the bathroom. It's they're always creative. It's like, <laughs> it's like oh, okay, can I wash my hands first. Uh, that's good. I went to the Paris bar citizen uh, on my vacation, and that that was that was great. It's the first time in Paris. I met a lot of people. We actually have a couple things uh, added to the uh, a set that they, they were given. We got some uh, new coasters that with the Eiffel Tower and stuff on the bar citizen logo, and a, and a goblet back there. Um, all right. So this week's show is a little different than our normal format. Uh, this 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 is a community Q, Q and A show. So for this week's show, we put up a thread on Spectrum. And we collected a bunch of questions from from uh, from our backers, and uh, you guys went through and selected the questions, uh, uh, selected the questions, and were kind enough to, to to send me the list and whatnot. I, thank you for including their names. So we're going to read off the names of the people who asked the questions and whatnot. Um, but before we jump in, I want to talk a little bit about what the mission feature team does and doesn't, because that's going to color quite a few of the answers to these. So let's talk about what the mission feature team does first uh, well mission feature team we uh, we take um, features made by other teams and we make missions that use them so um, it tends it kind of like we definitely also make the mission uh, system itself but um, so the so it's often the the confusion comes is that why haven't you made this mission yet? You know, and the reason is often, well, we don't actually make the features that is the backbone of how that 
feature of what the mission could even be of is. Yeah, well, like the bow so, at the end of the the uh, present. Right? Everyone's so got wrapping. So on. when uh, uh, gameplay teams create salvaging, yep. then you yeah. go and you make missions that exactly. use salvaging. When they make when they create mining, you go and make missions that do mining. Exactly. Uh, one of the questions here from Nine Toes is asking about where's the data running missions, and the answer is when a gameplay. Yeah. Your team creates a, a data running as a as a gameplay system as a, as a loop. Then you guys can create missions. Yeah, yeah. because that. like on that it'd be sort of we could fake it, but what's the point in that? We might as well wait and give you the real, true, intended experience mm -hmm. instead of like almost like a yeah. Because we, we might why, we might invent things that the uh, the the real owner of that feature doesn't necessarily want it to be. So we do two things. We basically mess with expectations of players. Um, we also waste work on us. We um, annoy people who are also developers. <laughs> and then in the end result, we have to backpedal um, all of our work and redo it once they've done the feature. And then we also have egg on our face. So it kind of is a yeah. is pretty pretty bad way of working yeah. it, 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 one of the terms we use internally is is downstream it's a it's a you're kind of kind of you're not as downstream as like audio is audio has to wait for everybody to do their stuff yeah. before they can get in there because then you know before they make the sound of a ship they need to they need to see the profile they need to see how big it is they need to see how aggressive it looks they need to see how janky it looks or how slick and smooth it looks you know and, and then they build a profile that matches uh, that matches that you guys are you guys are somewhere in the middle, but still downstream of a lot of other teams, downstream of at least the gameplay, yeah. you, you yeah. know, the gameplay design yeah. teams. And I mean, we still make stuff ourselves, and sometimes we we own those things, like... Uh, like Law System. Or even the Spawn Closets yep. is part of our team. No, Spawn Closets is part of our team, which is why it ends up in, like, a lot of missions. That's why it work works on, perfectly. You know? yeah. So it's so, perfect for us, but, yeah. So, so that's our backdoor answer for for for, for nine toes here, uh, who asked about you know you know I think the question was specifically you know hey we've got a herald we've got an MSR where the heck are our, our data running yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. missions that is you know when uh, uh, when EUPU or whomever does maybe it's Austin whomever uh, you know you know gets the data running you know gameplay systems up then you guys will absolutely jump in to make missions yes. just the same as you're doing with salvage just absolutely. like you're doing mining like that. Okay. Yep. So, all right, let's jump into these questions here. Uh, uh, our first one is from uh, Caden. Hi, Caden. Uh, says, will there be more FPS missions besides the generic bunker and cave missions that involve killing every enemy? Maybe something that involves ground vehicles, like a convoy assault. Oh, he snuck a suggestion in there. Uh, who wants to? Elliot? Sure. Um... <laughs> Yes, well, we're going to want more variety when it comes to FPS missions. The, you know, when it comes to stuff like convoy of uh, assault, again, with us being like a downstream dependency, it requires things like you know AI to be able to drive a convoy if we're assaulting one that's already in, in process. Um, it comes with other things like you know making sure that, that we have a route set up and we can send you to intercept. Oh, um, the main one is like trying to enforce. Yes. You know, uh, keeping players ground vehicles yeah it, a, a mission with ground vehicles yeah. where we have to say oh, you have to use a ground vehicle we have to contrive yeah we have to why sure would you stay in that ground vehicle you've got ships you know ship. just put the ground vehicle on the ship and we do it it's, it's and, very difficult we've talked about stuff like having like like electrical storms yeah. on planets and things like that but you know they're, they're feature requests that are in and when we get the time and scheduling, we'll, we'll get to them and we'll be able to do this sort of stuff because we need to have a, some sort of situation that goes to the player, kind of like how we did with Siege, where we go, you can't use your ships. You can only yeah. use this method of vehicle to be able to ensure that you yeah, can Yeah, that was our contrivance in that yeah. scenario to enforce a kind of gameplay scenario we really wanted to achieve. Yeah. But as again, as, as gameplay teams and other feature teams, you know, add things like the electrical storm, yes. stuff like that, that, that create situations, then you won't have to fake a situation. Yeah, no, you won't, just, because it will be yeah. a systemic thing and, and, and it will all work as you would expect it to. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, you know, in Siege, if we took away the no-fly zone, someone will bring a carrack and just like mow down the entire platform and you then just drop land bombs and, on it. Uh, yeah, bomb it and it'd be <laughs> so having a reason to remove that ability, even though obviously the game is massively about ships, it's about having multiple gameplay styles and catering to everyone. I, I, I remember the early testing, a lot of the early testing on Siege when, when people were trying, you know, 
you know, you obviously you had the no-fly zone, but people were trying to get up enough speed in their ship, mm -hmm. you know, to, to kind of coast in and even crap, use the ship as a, as a weapon and, and just like see how many, how many uh, uh, NPCs they could take out with, you know, the crash and yeah. ship and so, yeah. We have fun like conversations with that where someone's like, well, what happens if they fly above the platform and drop a tank? Uh, or a vehicle we don't want on it. And we're like, well, if you can manage to drop a vehicle all that way and manage yeah, to just go for it, fine. That, that, it's that's your reward. Yeah. I mean, admittedly, you know, until, a, until a, a lot of the physics improvements that are underway work on, a lot of our ships kind of just fall and bounce off the ground anyway. I just so. want to say one other thing about those ground vehicles is that right now we have, um, we have AI working on uh, making it so that they will be able to drive those vehicles on yeah. the planets and stuff. Yeah. Uh, but it's still obviously some possibly some distance from them being competent in both firing and driving so there are other reasons like we could probably have static vehicles but you might argue what's the point it's yeah. much fun blowing up static vehicles uh our next question is from eliminator or lemonator eliminator Lemon is in capitals. Uh, what happened to dynamic mission givers? It seems the ones we have need some love, and the ones that were once on the roadmap have never been seen again. What happened to Eddie Parr? I'm not going to ask about Tessa Bannister. They'll come when it comes. But what happened to Eddie Parr? What happened to the other? Uh, yeah, so the, the, the thing that happened with the mission givers is that the, the team that owned mission givers uh, went through uh, some... Uh, movement around of personnel and so the ownership kind of uh, fell fell away a little bit but the uh, the narrative team now own mission givers which makes a lot more sense because I mean they design the characters they probably they write their their words they build their law so it makes a lot of sense that they would own it um, so they also have they're also building their own uh, designers in the narrative team so so there's actual people who design stuff and, and make things. So now they also have people to work on them and, and improve them. So there is definitely a focus on, on getting them up, uh, up working better and, uh, you know, maybe introducing more or uh, improving um, various things about them. So, yeah, yeah. They will come back and they will get better. Um, yeah. yeah, I know. Uh, you're part of the... Uh, um, we're in the process of... Uh, uh, we're... Uh, you know, still building out our UK office here, and uh, you know, still uh, there's still areas that are under construction, which is why we haven't shown you our nice comprehensive tour. We want to wait until it's all uh, done, uh, but uh, a lot of the artwork has been going up in the last couple of weeks, and mm. and yeah, a lot of it is based on our great mission givers and whatnot, and, and so it's it's actually there's actually this internal sense of we walk past and like, oh gosh, remember remember this guy? And like this guy was going to be cool, and, and and oh yeah, you know, uh, 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 Pacheco, she was going to be she was going to be real cool. It's like it's it's th th there's this movement. Internally, we we would really like to get that going, get those back. I know the narrative team has so much uh, intended for these people, including uh, Tessa Bannister. To add a little bit more to to it, the credence to those designers, like the designer working on it, is our former embedded QA. Yeah, who, who Matt. he became a, a designer, and so he's, he's he's he came from our our strong stock. Yeah, so yes. he's a, you know, we, we trust his abilities to yeah. to bring the best. Can solutions. never overstate the value of you know starting in a QA and as, as, a, as a launching pad for almost every discipline. In Pretty much 99% of all developers come from QA and QA are the backbone, the fundamental to every game studio. Mm -hmm. So go QA. Yeah, I mean, I, I worked, I, st I, I started in QA, but not in this company years ago, you know, so yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. Blizzard. Uh, let's see, next question, Slothstronaut. <coughs> I should look at these names beforehand. Slostronaut says, any plans you can share for missions suitable for larger groups or organizations? Uh, yeah, so the way we think about um, missions that would be aimed at like large groups or organizations is that uh, we kind of have a sort of a philosophy that the more complex the objectives are, the more you know, the more they're intended for, for larger groups. Right now, a lot of our missions are quite simple on their, their yeah. combination of objectives um, or the number of objectives you have to do at the same time. Obviously, something like Siege of Orison is a good example of something with multiple things and the intention there is multiple players play together. However, outside of dynamic events, um, 
we, we, we want to make sure that we have content that is suitable to divvy up to a crew of players and whatnot. So, um, so we, we, we're aware that players like this because they've demonstrated. We demonstrate it in like Xenothreat and Siege where people play, they do different things, uh, different roles. And so we're aware that there's an appetite. Um, for example, uh, our, one of our missions that's fairly newly announced, it's on the, the roadmap now, the, uh, the da data heist mission. Mm -hmm. That one is, uh, is a mission that a skilled player probably would be able to do on their own, but it, it's one of these missions that puts a lot of stress on that one player if they were to do it. You've got to like, um, you've got to, first you've got, to, you've got like enemies that you're going to be contending with in the UGFs. Um, on top of that, there'll be, um, there'll be, you're basically uh, uploading data to um, a handler, like an offsite hacker. And to do that, you um, you basically uh, I'm losing my train of thought, so you're gonna have to take over. <laughs> oh, what with the data heist? <laughs> he wasn't I'm losing my train of thought, so you're gonna have to Neither take one over. Neither of us were listening. Going we just, into a just stopped crashing, talking. Yeah. So. Um, yeah. Uh, so so you've got those the guys with the FPS guys. Then you've got these downloads that can be interrupted. Sorry, yes. they can be interrupted, and when they're interrupted. Someone needs to run around looking for codes to enter to servers to prevent them from being like losing their data, um, and then uh, you've got to get to them before they they uh, they overheat, and then you lose the data and you lose the mission. Anyway, point is, single player, you know, yes. is doing a lot of stressful things in one go. Right. But um, a crew of players, like a bunch of players who want to play together and make the most out of that, well-oiled machines, probably going to like work their way through that and have one person doing this, one person doing that, you know coordinating well and 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 that mission is is clearly designed probably better to be worked on as a group um and in addition to that like a mission like that if we were to make it and we are making it like that we would make sure that we we'd put a pay you know a reward on it that would be meaningful for a group of players obviously single player great payday i just did but you did a lot of work for it yeah. whereas a group of players you're working to get the best uh, out of it and not be so stressed, but the payoff is still worth your time. So yeah, yep. it's a consideration. Yep. It's uh, and we'll undoubtedly uh, do something in IAC where we you know dive deeper and show more of the development of that. Probably. Sorry, I just I just lost my train of thought. It's it's one of those things when you're in a live show, it's like and then you go go off a cliff. It happens all the time. That's how people know it's live. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's like the, you know, the, he's avo he's avoiding switching my camera because he doesn't want to, want to show that I'm you know, parched and drinking water. I get thirsty during the show too. It's all part of being alive. Quite surprised in that monologue you didn't switch to like an in scene in game of someone looking at a monitor like you did with me. Uh, the editing what? you did on my uh, modular mission thing where you all did me dirty and everyone just sat there waiting, looking at the camera and everything. And I'm just, dirty. that was, that was, and, and, that every, was, and everyone's was, getting up and walking off and sure I'm just sat here yeah, like, ugh. Sure right, we'll talk, we'll do, we'll do a little behind the scenes on that though. So, so, so we shot at, we shot Elliot's interview first. Oh, we're already off the track. We'll have to, well, Bon, do you mind if we put a few minutes? Okay, we'll go, he's safe, that's fine. We shot Elliot's interview and he did that, he did that entire explanation. One shot, one take. No interruptions, no anything. If we hadn't cut to the other people, it, you would have seen that it was a completely uninterrupted take, no teleprompter, no notes offside. It was awesome. But while he's doing it, I'm just, I'm just sitting here like, while he's saying it, I'm like, I'm just imagining the reactions that some backers would have if we put this on there completely uninterrupted. Yeah. So, so then you know he left, and then we brought in uh, uh, Yorit and, and Lars and thing, and I'm like. After they did their interviews, I'm like, okay, I need you to do some reaction shots for me. And they're like, what? I just need you to look at the camera. And I need, I need you to imagine you're listening to Elliot for about seven minutes straight. And I didn't have to do any other directing after that. They were just like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> So, no, it was, it, was, it was good. I was watching uh, some Twitch, uh, some of our Twitch streamers uh, react to it. And I watched uh, Devin, Devin Aubrey, I think her uh, name is. Mm -hmm. And uh, <clears throat> as you were showing like the clips of them going, oh my God, she literally went, oh yeah, this guy goes on a bit, doesn't he? And I was like, <laughs> sat there and chilling, oh my God. <laughs> you wanted to do it that way though. No, no, no. no I, wanted, really I wanted, wanted to go to over, just talk, because I didn't, I didn't want to like, 
I just wanted to explain it all. I didn't want to lose anything cut away. I wanted to have it all complete, you know? Uh, next question from Xperia. Uh, compared to the number of PvE missions, there are very few PvP missions. Can we expect to see any PvP missions in the future? Yeah, um, PvP missions <clears throat> in our game are a, a bit more uh, of, a, of a challenge to do because it, it always relies on two people wanting to do the same thing. So what we try to do instead is not give you an objective that's directly like kill Ed. Yeah, kill it's, Ed. It's instead we put you in a sort of a mission flow that has parts of vulnerability to where the player can do these sort of acts. Like, for example, Jump Town. We only want you to deliver maze. Whatever bloodthirsty murdering you do is strictly on you as a person um, and your choice there. So yeah, Plenty of people come exactly, that and, and, you know, that's fine. So our intention is to put you in a situation that allows you to take advantage and think, right, well, if I, if I kill this person, I could come out on top. You know, the risk versus reward. So that's the sort of things we're trying to do. Jump Town, Korea. We have other things in the pipeline that are going to also try to pull this sort of, this gameplay in with the new um, uh, re uh, resource rush stuff, the asteroid mining we've talked about. That is an open area where people will go in and fight. Same sort of thing. We're not going to tell you to kill anyone. Yeah. But if you want the high profits, you're probably going to yeah, do it risk. so don't get away. There's reward. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And then there's always the, the classic you know, one mission to one group of people that says, you know, go here and do the thing. And then a mission to that another group of people yeah. that says, maybe go to the same place and do something else. Like, what? Well, yeah. yeah. yeah exactly, yeah. If it was a delivery mission and we sent you after the same box, both of you, yeah. one of you is going to win. Yeah. There, there, there was this kid in elementary school named Billy Escobar that used to dig a hole in the, in the playground. And he would go and he would gather red ants from one mound and move the red ants and then go and gather black ants and put them in there and watch them just fight. Now, what a you, psychopath. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Billy Escobar. Last name. I don't name know where you Escobar. are. But, uh, <laughs> His cousin was Pablo. No, no. Uh, Virgil. See, we go off on tangents. Virgil says, with the new ship components being physicalized for 319, uh, some of them, uh, with the tractor beam gameplay, uh, is there any plan for rare ship components to be loot rewards for ground missions? Uh, well, we wouldn't do it that way per se. Like, um, your missions coming up, the salvage ones, is it salvage mm -hmm. or is it the other I ones? mean, salvage ones, you take them off, yeah. Yeah, salvage ones, you could take them off, yeah. Yeah, so in which case, I guess the way that we probably would, would do this is uh, we treat um, the Rex as effectively like like a like a loot box like yeah, a, like much. like so so its loadout is potentially good. It's yeah. potentially got cool yeah. and interesting components on it. So if you happen to be salvaging this ship that we've spawned for you, and it's good, well your reward is in the cool, cool stuff yeah. you find, isn't it? So I think we do it that way rather than let's say here's your reward for completing this mission and it's a here's a component i mean yeah so that's how the we that's how i think we yeah, think you, about you it really. a good point there's it that's you know a lot of games you'll get the mission and then in the rewards thing you know like there's an item attached you know and and, and that and that that's the that's the mission reward loot and everything. we don't necessarily do that we like to set up we like to use our missions to set up situations yes. mm -hmm. and yeah. then if you are proactive in that situation and you and you and and, and, and you do the little extra due diligence and you search something. Yeah. We absolutely. provide opportunities for you to discover other things. But yeah. but I can't think of a single and you could correct me if I'm wrong, I can't think of a single mission in our game that's specifically go and do this and I'm gonna give you this item yeah, as a no. reward. We don't I mean, we don't do we, we don't, have one no. of those? We, no. we we don't do we don't do yeah. item rewards yeah. at the moment, so no but again that's not to say that we won't ever, you know no. it, it's no we, we've of. learned never to say never. Here, but it's just at the moment, that's not really the direction. I think a good point on what, what Ed was saying is that, like, I've said this in multiple t Twitch chats and on a few different things, so I guess good to say here and put it all in one place is that when it comes to salvage, uh, your, main, your main thing you'll do is hole scraping. However, 
now with the item port detaching, you can take the guns off and the components and sell them. Not only that, we populate the cargo hold with random assortments of cargo. So there's extra value random in there. Random or a bit more chosen yes. to be a bit more interesting so to you. We play with it. So you could you could go go do a ship, you could scrape all of it, take all its guns in, and then go into the hold and it's full of like something worth it. something that's incredibly expensive so what goes from being oh i've just hull scraped this entire ship and got like you know five hundred thousand uec becomes you know a 2.2 million payout because of the items on the ship and the cargo hold yeah this is this this, this is this is where i want to do my little disclaimer here that the five hundred thousand and the oh yeah these like, numbers are just th those are numbers <laughs> like i don't know where in its brain those came from but that does yeah. not represent uh, uh, specific economics and stuff before you go and, do you and make, to, make your comments on. Uh, shall, shall I do me thing? If it, <laughs> no, 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 no. You no, don't no, want no, me to do the Reddit no. thing. Tom, Tom, Tom's working on. Tom's working <laughs> on something. I haven't seen it yet, but Tom's working on something that he's told me is called the Reclaimer Disclaimer. And <laughs> I haven't seen it, and I don't know what it's called, but eventually it'll show up. That would have been a good time for it. And see, he's he's going. He's back there going. Oh, if I had only had it set up right now, that would have been a good time for it. Would've Next time, gonna, I was going to do that. No Reddit. That's just an example, <laughs> and then let it pass. Um, Anuline uh, says, will missions eventually move away from the Moby Glass app and be more focused on other means of accepting them, such as the mission givers themselves or interactable terminals and stuff like that? Uh, yeah, we, 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 we would like in the future um, the way that you obtain missions to be a slightly more personable experience. Um, but at the end of the day, you're, nev you're not really ever going to get away from a scenario where you are using your mobile glass to read uh, mission descriptions or see the objectives or even accept them. But accepting, I mean, when you go to like Eckhart, when you sit down with him, you do a little chit chat, you still bring up your mobile glass to accept yeah, that exactly, mission. A little, yeah. So this, this aspect isn't going to go. However, so that's, that's always going to be there, but there may be other ways that we want to do it. Um, one way that the narrative team um, and, and some other designers want to want to go for is a so, sort of like um, sort of simple mission giver a sort of mission giver light which isn't quite as like elaborate as something like Eckhart um, but it would be like something where you have a sort of generic NPC like someone you just meet on the street who wants to do an errand and they they would say hey I want you and then I mean I'm not don't know what the lines are going to be and they're probably quite simple lines but you would then go over to them, you'd have a simpler interact with them, but then they'd offer you a mission, you take their errand or their mission or their quest or whatever it is, and you go and do it. And, and so that would be a, a more organic, rather than going to the mission giver in the bar, it would be like walking down the street and catching up and, and hearing something and getting involved with someone's business <laughs> in a nice way. <laughs> yeah, it, 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 definitely more, you know, in situation, more diegetic situation. Yeah. Although we're never going to get away from the, mo the Moby Glass. Moby is, Glass is, is the core like, of the system. It's like our mobile phones today. It's yeah, try to, yeah, try yeah. to live life yeah. with that one right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's possible, but I mean, um, I want, not a world I'd like to live in. Yeah. Uh, Driftwood Badger. That's the one. I love that name. The Driftwood. What Driftwood, Driftwood Badger. Badger. I have no clue. Is it just it's like deep. a is it like a wooden bad like a badger that's already made like a carved out of driftwood? Or a badger that lives on driftwood? driftwood? Or is it a living badger that just feeds on driftwood? It's an amazing name. I love you in the it. chat? Let us know. Driftwood Badger uh, has a question that's actually near and dear to my heart. I've given Dave. I've given Dave uh, a Haddock some crap for this in the past. Uh, it was discussed a couple years ago on video about how all the mission givers, this was me, he's talking about me because I called him out on it. Uh, all the mission givers in the universe are mostly all criminals and scumbags, or at least very morally gray. That still seems to be the case. What are the plans for giving non-criminals to mission givers that don't make them want to take a long, hot shower after? Uh, uh, what can I say? Uh, I don't remember. Dave Haddock is shady AF. That's all I can say. <laughs> No, it's just it's just how it ended up. It's just it, it, what we talked about. It's really the same answer we talked about on the video a couple a couple years ago. It's just um, it, it was we had all the legal things. You know, Tessa was still in the universe at the time. You know, like, it's it's like well, we wanted to start you know putting in some of that morally grace. So those became the focus. Those became the first things. And then, as you already answered earlier in the day, the, the you know the, the mission giver team kind of got re rearranged and stuff, and that lost some priority. And now that it's back with narrative. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, the, 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 that's sort of picking up steam again. It's also really dependent on the character team and really dependent on the animation team because the mission giver requires way more animation work than yeah. any other NPC. The 
that see. game because they have a uh, unique location. Exactly. Exactly. So, so, so it's just a lot of things that you have to come together to do them um, and stuff like this. But there, there's a list. Uh, the best I can offer is that there's a list internally. Uh, I've seen it. There are more mission givers that aren't scumbags and that aren't you know just aren't Clovis Darnieli and and stuff like that. Clo no, there's 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 um I mean. They're not in the game yet. But exactly, there's, but there's there's some from Crusader who I think yep. they're like, I I'm pretty sure they're supposed to be like security. Yep. Uh, like you've got them there. I, their yeah, name. Yeah. Uh, remember, unless you don't want to uh, read uh, it out. But but uh, call me a name. Batista and Gibbs. And Gibbs. There we go. I remembered the Batista, but I forgot the Gibbs. So they're they're, they're like a uh, they're um, two people. They're like a, a mission giver of. Two people, which is a new thing, which is partly probably why they're not in the game yet. Um, so there's another challenge for us. Um, so that yeah, they 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 head up like uh, Crusader security, and they would be offering uh, security missions. And of course, there's Tessa Bannister, who isn't in the game at the moment, but she will be coming back. And um, oh, she yeah, be the new imperator. Pardon? <laughs> no, she no. I'm no. reading Twitch she's, chat. That's not. She's not jaded thing. enough to to be that sort of. Person. Provocative, not really. <laughs> More provocative. No, but 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 no. Oh. There, the, let's just let's just uh, let's wrap this question up by saying there are a number of mission givers. Yes, they've already had their PCAP recorded. They've already had their voiceovers done years ago. It's just waiting for that confluence of AI, of character art, of animation, of location, all that stuff that comes together that actually yeah. that has to yeah. pull one. Yeah. And they're all all just on. There is also another doing. aspect, which is we. I mean, we don't want to put out more mission givers where they don't have missions. Yes. Fair. Content. So Fair. it's kind of like we've already done that. We don't want to do more of that. <laughs> uh, uh, Dirty Merc says, uh, uh, do we have a path when a mission fails due to circumstances that are out of our control, like a server or no spawns or item delivery despawn, to redo the mission without incurring a negative reputation? This is a good question. Uh, good job, Dirty Mark. Yeah, so the thing is, if we would be able to detect if one of these bad things had happened, we would have modified the mission such that it would be a fix and you would never see it happen. Of course, it still happens because we know it happens. And uh, in the case specifically with reputation, and the reputation hit because of course reputation is progression to get new missions and whatnot. Um, we do and have selectively in the past decided we're going to remove this negative hit on a fail. Um, but the problem is if you do it everywhere, you bury bugs and we don't want to bury bugs. I, we don't want to ruin your day either, but at the same time, we need to figure out some things are within our, you know, some things are within the wheelhouse of, of what missions can fix and some things are outside of what missions can fix. Um, but we still can't just like, oh, we turn that off and then we never really improve it as a system. We never even fix it as a system. So it's, it's not that we're vindictive or anything. We just want, to make it better and sometimes we need to find the bug and sometimes it's really hard to find the bug yeah now you make you make a good point there's always the it's workarounds not only don't solve the problem but no sometimes they, they can it. exasperate yeah and prolong the existence yeah it could be further the down the line when suddenly like a few missions are using it and it's like oh it's broken so we turn it off then suddenly the um the load of designers go and implement something and they put it across loads of missions and they turn it all on and it all breaks and then you're like oh my oh no we didn't fix the thing that was underlying that you know that would be very bad yeah. so whilst we have less missions we want to fix them before um you get loads and then they've all got the bug in it you know uh yelmerk yelmerk uh with salvaging and mining in missions are there any plans for refueling missions for players who maybe own a Starfare? Oh, right. Um, oh, yeah. yeah, that was on mine. Um, yeah, so uh, refueling, um, yeah, it's been with us for quite a while now, but it is still a player-on-player player player mechanic. Yeah. Um, when refueling was first being designed, there was an effort from uh, AI had priority to be looking at ways for AI to reciprocate and be the 
refueled. Right. Um, and then, and then, you know, shifting of priorities and people moving around and refueling changed a lot, came out, um, and the prototype work of what refueling is for an AI didn't maintain to be matched with. Right now, priorities for AI don't put them in alignment with working on that particular feature to, to bring up. So basically, AI designers and AI engineers would need to come back and look at that particular behavior to, for them to cooperate with a player refueling them. And then, you know, and then it would, be, it would be possible. But once they make a behavior, then it would be something that I think we'd probably put in like service beacons. Yeah. So it'd be a spoofed NPC beacon where they ask for refueling and you refuel them. And then after that, it would actually be something that we could put in a mission because we could make a module around it. Yeah. But you see how we are downstream of something, of a downstream, of a sort of downstream. So it's, 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 you know, it's not like no one's thought about it. Yeah. It's just There's also layers. a chicken and egg problem where uh, you, you you generally want to prioritize work that affects the largest percentage yeah, of people and not everybody owns a refueling ship. In fact, probably most players don't. So, it be, so that becomes kind of a niche. But the chicken and the egg thing is, well, if you made missions for it, then maybe more people would get you know, well, refueling yeah, ships. Yeah, so it's, 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 it's hard to, it's hard to course, balance that. Of course. Um, we, I think we got time for two more before we, uh, before we bring in our next guest here. Uh, uh, Nine Toes, had, since we've kind of skipped Nine Toes' question before, here's another one from Nine Toes. Any plans for larger cargo hauling missions? Yeah, um, I've spoke about this multiple times. Big fan of delivery missions. Uh, I spend a lot of my time on Euro Truck Simulator too. Um, so yeah, I love big cargo uh, cargo missions, but one of the fundamental pieces we need, um, because I, I, I don't want to give you cargo missions where you go up, click a terminal, it spawns in your ship. I'd prefer the flow to be nice. What I'd Freight like, elevators. right? So cargo, yeah, ele so. cargo elevators. I want you to have to move the boxes, or in the future, pay someone to move the boxes for you. And I want that to feel like you are a delivery man who's loading your truck full of goods, going from A to B, maybe getting pirated, uh, getting there. You don't always have to be pirated. Don't always. Maybe it's maybe. You know. uh, that's just an example, Reddit. Yeah. Um, and then taking just your boxes to, to the drop off. Yeah. Uh, but I want a full, proper mission flow that makes you feel like a delivery man. Yeah. yeah. And for those who follow the the, the public roadmap, uh, not the release view, the what's the other one, progress view. Um, You'll see that you know freight elevators are in development, whatever. I've seen I've seen some internal reviews and stuff. You know the elevator opens up and there's a whole bunch of a whole bunch of crap, and it's like I got to get this into my ship, and yep. you know, and, and they're all prototyping different ways of, of moving the things, either by the hand tractor beam or by you know carts and yeah. stuff like this. So so it's all being worked out when it's you know farther along, and and, and we kind of we're more. Uh, we're more confident in the exact approach you know, we're going to take. That's when we'll show it to you. They're still kind of blue skying a couple of things, how best to move things from the elevator into their ships. It, it goes into the whole thing of we could fudge it and make it all right, but we want to let our key focus is fun in the yeah. verse. So we want to make things that are polished that we think are going to be fun and that players will enjoy. Yeah, and another team is working on making it to some degree fun. Yeah. So we would be stepping on their toes. Yeah, very silly for us. Uh, let's see, last question before we uh, uh, bring on our next guest. Uh, Salty Mike. Oh, God. Man, you managed, you managed to squeeze one in here for Salty Mike. Again, I want to I state that I did not pick these questions. These guys picked these questions this week. Uh, there would not have been a Salty Mike question here. I'm just kidding. Which one is it? Salty Mike. I don't know. I just yeah, I know, but which one? Oh, I don't I just, know. I just, oh, well, quite I, just, a few. I just default into giving him so much trash. It's the one that's marked I took, I, took, I took him to Germany once. It was a, it was a thing. Um, in a, <laughs> I wish I were better at this. Um, in a recent monthly report, it states the team has now taken over reputation. What are the plans for the near future with expanding reputation for players in the game? Okay. Um, yes. Reputation. Yeah, we, we, we've taken it over from USPU. And there's a few things that we're focusing on. And one of the most important parts we, we think we need to get out is reputation-based hostility. So we want it so that you can do missions for like the nine tails in the verse. And the, the, when you do these missions, you gain reputation and you can gain reputation to a point where you're allowed at their outposts because you're friends with them. You could be doing Siege of Horizon and they won't shoot you because they think you're friends. But then what needs to come 
pretty much at the same time or directly after that is a uh, like sandbox reputation hooks. So these are things like if I shoot Ed, my reputation Where's will loop. Ed? Yeah, Where's you're Jared? right next to me. Uh, Listen, it could be Jared. If oh, okay, if I shoot Jared, my reputation with the entire community you goes down. Apologize when you win. I yeah. know, right? Yeah. Anyway, sorry. But, <laughs> the, your reputation goes down. If you shoot nine tails, your reputation would decrease with them. And if you keep shooting them, they're going to start hating you. So even though you could start it's seeing not just shooting, it could be these oh, it could be are, these destroying any shit really. or they anything. Like... Yeah, we just want like ways of going. Right, the player's done this. It's against this faction, this reputation. So this reputation has allies of these people, so it's also going to a little bit affect them, but they're hated by these, so these people are going to get a positive outcome from your one action. Yeah. yeah. So we, we want to have, we're focusing on getting those because we think that's going to make the universe feel more alive yeah. and more uh, influenced by your actions as a player, mm. um, especially like being able to do missions for Ninetales will allow criminal players to live that life. Yeah, because I think criminal. that's why we, we chose not to do Reputation for Ninetales yes. up till now, because we it creates this problem where we go, yeah, but wait a minute, you do these missions for Ninetales and they're supposed to like you, yet you still get missions to murder them and they and you can murder them all and yet they still give you missions. And because there's no connection between those two things, it's where it all comes apart. Yeah. So we don't want to expose that obvious fault, but we want to after this particular feature yeah. work. Reputation is a very important system to us. Yeah, we know they're supposed to underpin everything. So, well, many things. So there you go, Mike. Now stop asking. And uh, it is entirely possible to want to murder somebody that you like. Yeah. Uh, I've been in a relationship yeah, of before. of course. You like them. <laughs> they might not like you anymore, I suppose. All right. So, Ed, uh, Elliot, thank you so much for hanging out, for taking the time, uh, for agreeing to be on the show uh, this week, and for going through, pulling your own questions, stuff like this. It's like this was, this was one of the easiest shows I've ever had to do. I just kind of left it with you guys and whatnot, and then I got... Uh, I forgot what I was going to say. It's all right. Is that when you end the show? <laughs> no. I forgot ah. where I was going with that. I just went... It was, yeah. It's gone. That's cool. Uh, anyway, uh, we're going to take a short break. And when we return, uh, we'll be back with uh, a, tech, senior, a technical director of UI technical technology. Technical director uh, of UI uh, technology. Uh, uh, yeah, that was <laughs> uh, Mr. Gill. Uh, so stay tuned. We'll be right back.
back. Who said it? So, 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 somebody in the chat was like, they should do a CIG dunk tank at CitizenCon. And I don't hate the idea. Maybe it's just because I'm really hot in here right now. <laughs> like a dunk tank sounds like a good idea. Uh, that uh, was a look at the new lore bill uh, scheduled to make its arrival into the Persistent Universe in Alpha 319. And you'll be learning even more and seeing a lot more of it uh, in next week's ISC. So uh, stay tuned for that. Um, for the second half of the show, before we get to our next guest, I wanted to do a little show and tell. I'd like to highlight some of the things that make up uh, our uh, only constant here. Uh, this week, I would like to highlight one of my absolute favorites. Uh, 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 this, is, this is a scale replica of the Parasite Helmet. Uh, oh, this one, there we go. Of the Parasite Helmet, uh, made by Star Citizen backer, uh, Mighty Heidi. Uh, uh, this was, I commissioned this from her, and, and, and this, this just arrived here. Uh, uh, if you've never seen this before, uh, this is a, uh, sub a subscriber item uh, that goes back to my time. I, I, I ran the subscriber program for like a year in 2018 or 2019 or something like that. Uh, this is one of the items that I commissioned and had added uh, to the game. And the helmets in the game, uh, uh, the, the eye, uh, it moves with the face tracking and stuff. This one doesn't. Uh, but, but yeah, so check that out. That's available in the, uh, in the uh, subscriber store. The, the, the in-game one, not this one. This is, this is a special one of kind uh, made for me by, again, Star Citizen, Mighty Heidi. Uh, shout out to them. I'm just going to put that right here for the rest of the show. Right there. Look at that. Look how gorgeous that is. Uh, yeah. Our next guest is uh, uh, Technical Director of UI Technology. Is that what we decided? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, newly promoted. Just, uh, yeah, uh, I can't get it right. Just as we, uh, 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 David Gill. Dave, how you doing? How you doing? I've never called you Dave in my life. It sounded wrong when I said it. Uh, <laughs> most people, you have a nickname. Uh, occasionally, there's a person in game dev who who has a nickname that's completely separate from their name. It's not Dave. You have a nickname. Do you want to do you want to share that, or should we not share that with people? No, no, you can share that. Yeah. Uh, um, even my parents call it me. So. Really? Yeah. Your nickname is Bone. It is. Yeah. Which isn't the coolest nickname in the world, but you know, oh. uh, you don't get to choose your nickname. That's the rule, right? Yeah. Now, uh, uh, w before we started the first half, Elliot and I were talking about how he had heard a story about how you, he had heard two different stories about how you got that name. And I had said, I'd never heard a story. I'd never even asked. I preferred the mystery. But since we brought it up, w where did this nickname come from? Um, it's something as straightforward as I'm quite thin. <laughs> so, sorry, I. No, I'm not going to, that, that's not broadcastable. That <laughs> <laughs> it's a good thing Elliot's not Mike back there anymore. Uh, so, uh, Bone, this is, your, this is your, your first time on the live show in yeah. quite a few years, at least the first time in the spaceship here. Uh, tell everybody a little bit about who you are and what you do for Star Citizen. Um, well, as, as you point out, newly promoted, but uh, I'm the guy that makes, I'm, I'm a game coder, essentially at heart, but I'm... Uh, a coder that writes the stuff that allows people to make UI. So I don't actually make the UIs, I make the things that make the UIs. I'm a bit like a tools programmer or, or an engine programmer, that kind of direction. You, you have one uh, thing that you've made uh, that's famous within the Star Citizen community. Everybody should, everybody should know this. Uh, but although we haven't talked about it in a while, we, for a while there we were talking about it almost every single week. Building blocks. Yes. That's so you're one of the key people responsible for building blocks. Yes, that's my baby. Um, yeah. So, yeah, I'm responsible for, responsible for making it, but also responsible for uh, keeping it working as well. So. <laughs> it's a big one. <laughs> Elliot's back there nodding. It's like, yeah, it's one thing to make something, but in a game that's still in active development, keeping it working is almost as much work, if not more, than making it the first time. Well, it's actually developing it as well, so it's um, getting better each each uh, quarter and like providing better tools and more interesting stuff for designers and for engineers so they can make better UIs. So the whole thing is, is never really standing still. It's always in development. So like fundamentally it works now and now we're like trying to improve it and to improve the tools because the faster people can prototype and make stuff, the better UIs you end up having, the better UIs, the better the features you have. So. Um, uh, now, uh, your title before you got promoted, it, it, it was? Senior Principal Engineer. Senior Principal Engineer. Uh, en en the engineer and programmer sometimes 
interchangeable yeah. or uh, coder even. Or, yeah, yeah. I, I, I not I notice in in the UK here that they, they use engineer a lot. Uh, more than programmer in the states, they tend to use pro programmer. Once we once uh, we once intend. I had when I was first starting here, and I was like, "Hey, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do a thing about how uh, the difference between engineers and programmers and whatnot." And then everybody's just like, "It's just cultural. It's the same thing." I'm like, "Well, that's a really short segment." Uh, so we didn't. We never did that. Um, but in your new role as technical director, do you have a sense of of what of what those responsibilities are going to be? Um, yes, uh, well, these, these, I was going to say, uh, before we get to this, I want to say, when I say new, I mean, the email went out this week. Yeah. Like it's really no, when I booked him, he was still the UI engineer. <laughs> so, so congratulations by the way, but uh, that's, that's why I want to say, do you have a sense yet of what the new responsibilities are going to be? So it's really about tooling at the moment is, um, we do have tools for making the UI, but, um, they're not very user friendly. Um, the two guys that we were on previously would definitely attest to this. Um, so we want something that's definitely more designer friendly, definitely more um, artistically friendly as well. So, um, and it's a complicated business because Chris is really into very 3D UIs and uh, we've all seen the stuff that Zane produces, which is awesome, but he's, he's extremely technical. And what we want to do is kind of lower the bar so we don't need extremely technical people like it. anyone can pick it up and make cool looking stuff. You know, you still need artistic ability and understand UX, but at the same time, we want to make this really achievable for um, the broad range of designers and artists. Right. I want to follow up on that so that it's not misconstrued and whatnot. It's when, you, when we say we want to make it more broadly available, we want to make it, that is because we are a, we are a, as, as a company, as a team, uh, fast approaching, if, we, if not, we've already passed over a thousand people. Uh, you know, yeah, and more incredible. than half of them, you know, game developers and stuff, you know, that thousand includes everybody, our, our office staff, the studio management, stuff like this. But there's a lot of developers here, all with varying levels of, of technical abilities, stuff like this. If everybody could program UI, everybody would. You know, it's so making these things accessible is, is, is super important. It's not about, well, let's not hire people who aren't technically proficient. No, 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 it's no. you hire people who have their proficiency here and have their proficiency here and have their proficiency here. But we, we want, you want to build a thing that doesn't require them to also have a UI programming proficiency so that you can yeah. spread this out. It's how we hit this at scale. But also um, just do stuff quicker. Like if you can make... Uh, try stuff out and go, mm, not quite so sure, and then try some other things out, and you're not struggling with the tools, and you're not struggling to author this stuff, and you just go, blop, 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 here's some things, right, yeah, that, that really uh, suits my feature, and it, you can move on really quickly, and like, you can produce more, you can produce more work if you've got better tools. It's like trying to, you know, trying to build a house with a, a tiny trowel or something, like, no, you want some heavy machinery that can... Uh, uh, build this stuff together so the better the tools the the better people can work and it frees them up to do more creative stuff rather than just screaming at their computers going these damn building blocks <laughs> <laughs> uh, now for this the, 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 the second half of the show here the second part of the show I like to delve a little more into the personal stuff we've we've, we've, we've talked more about work stuff than we traditionally do with our saying guess uh, one of the areas uh, we're not going to have time to like go through your whole life story or whatnot, unfortunately, but we'll have you back. Uh, one of the areas that we first connected is you obviously have a deep and abiding love of video games oh, yeah. and, and its history. Um, the, the, I think the first time we ever talked was because we were in one of those big meetings where there's you know hundred people and we're all the, and it, in the background of, of your of, of your camera, uh, I, I, there, 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 there were stand up arcade machines. There was one in particular. The, do you do you remember the the, the first arcade machine? I, 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 I sent you the message. I'd never talked to you before, and I'm like, dude, you have an actual freestanding uh, arcade game in the in the back, and I can't remember what it was uh, right now. I have a Miss Pac-Man and Gallagher um, it was Gallagher. machine, it was Gallagher. Yeah, Gallagher machine, yeah, um, and then a like two-player Street Fighter, six-button Street Fighter machine as well. But yeah, I'm a I'm a big big fan, of, especially the sort of mid '90s stuff. I think that's really mm -hmm. cool. And you've worked in game dev for a, a while now. Uh, yeah, and by this June, it will be 30 years. 30 years in the game industry. Uh, so one of the things I wanted to make sure that we... I, I, don't get to, I don't get to talk to a whole lot of people who've been around as long as I have. Most of the people I talk to are young, 
like Elliot. <laughs> so, 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 uh, uh, one of the one of the common game development things that we don't ever get to talk about is the canceled game, the the, the game the games that disappear. The every game developer has a resume with gaps where it's 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 where it just looks like they didn't they didn't do anything for a year or two years ago because they were working on a project that didn't survive but it's nda it wasn't it, it was never announced or what like this um one of the ones that i know you working on i i, I really i really want to talk about it uh you were working on an et game Yes, not the ET game I, that everyone. Yeah, not the, not the infamous no, Atari not, one. I, I'm not that old. Not, no. um, there was a 20, 20th anniversary of the film, um, so the film came out in 1982. 1982. So we were due for release in uh, 2002, and we were doing a, a GameCube PS2. Uh, what amounted to do uh, a gardening game. So, like, E.T. would fly to a planet and he would pick up some seeds and then he would, he would bring them to his spaceship and he would cultivate these seeds and then he could uh, cross-pollinate them with other... It's, it's sort of a bit like Pokemon, but with plants. It's, it, was, it was odd. Uh, it's, he's an odd character anyway. Like, I think most people are not really aware of E.T.'s abilities and, or maybe... Well, I'm very aware of E.T.'s abilities. <laughs> But he's, you know, he's a he's a interstellar gardener, which is is not the first thing you'd pick as a, a character for a video game. But uh, we had some really creative uh, game designers that come up with like yeah. cool idea, uh, and it was it was a really interesting game. Um, then our publisher was like, "Well, can we add a bit more than this just gardening bit?" So we, when we got to these planets, we would like have puzzle, puzzly sort of platform section. I found the artwork, can, you, can, you, can, you, can we zoom in on that? Can we zoom in on that? It, it had artwork. It, it had artwork and everything, so it obviously got kind of close. Um, it was finished. It was finished? It was, yeah, we finished it. And it never released? Never released. Um, and unfortunately, the, it, it came around that like, uh, it ended the company that I was working for as well, so because of the... Uh, the way the contracts worked out, so it was really unfortunate because we did it uh, at the time. I did lots and lots of crunch, got it, got it to completion, and then they go, "Yep, yeah, it's not not worth releasing." Now it's it's. I'm excited to tell you. So some of the folks who are watching this either live on Twitch or on the YouTube re uh, re replay might wonder why we're talking about this. Um, it's often perceived like ISC and SCL are our are, are, are marketing tools and one I'm sure they certainly have that role but I always try to uh, 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 attack both of them as education on the process of game development itself and I've been excited to have you on this because there, there's this aspect of game of the story of game development not not ours but in general and thing where you can work on a thing all the way to completion and it can still like yeah, Ed is back there, you know, nodding. He's like, yeah, this this happens. Like like all of us have been to a game dev mixer and met somebody, know somebody. If it's not happened to us, we know somebody who has spent years and working on something that never you know that never saw the light of day. And you just it's 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 one of the really awesome aspects of Star Citizen because we're we're out. It's like you you can, you can play our stuff while we're building. It's like this, so you know we don't have to you know we ch we chose a model where we don't have to worry about that, but. Uh, but that story, that aspect of game development, is is is, is an educational one that I, that I've that I've wanted to to share and to discuss with folks. Um, did we're almost out of time? But did did you? I you know, it's been twenty years. The company's out of business, and I'm sure the NDA probably doesn't you know apply. Did you did you did did you bring it? I may have did, I may did, have sneaked did, out. Did you bring it? I do have a the copy. Like literally, oh, look, at this, wow. look at this, look at this, look at this. Give me my zoom in, give me my zoom in. Look at this. Th th this is just a burn CDR. Th th this, this, is, this is the ET game. This is the copy. I think that's the only copy in the world. This might be the only copy in the world? That's, that's also the PS2 one, which is kind of strange, but yeah, that, this is the PS2 version? the only copy in the world. Don't drop it. I'm so fucking happy right now. <laughs> 
That's my one. Sorry. How many did you get it? <laughs> yeah, but I know it works. Did you, did you burn it to a CD yourself or did they make them? You're not mic'd. We can't hear you. We can't. I'm, I'm, I'm yeah, no, no. You know, he's not. You're not mic'd, so you can't hear his question. Can't so, hear his oh, question. That's what we talked about. You can't introduce <laughs> topics. We get in trouble. Well, when we, when you make PS2 games, um, not everyone's got a PlayStation 2 dev kit. So if you've got QA, you would burn. Actually, burn. A, <laughs> burn a, a copy of the game. Don't burn a copy of the game. And that'd be the game that week that uh, QA will be using, or it might go out to the publisher for them to evaluate and things like that. So, um, yeah, it's it's a bit of a more of a manual process. And is is this one that will play in a PS2, or will it be, do you need a PS2 dev kit? Uh, probably a dev kit, but I'm going to have a look. Okay. At some David, point. yeah, can we look on eBay for a PS2 dev kit? <laughs> Okay. It's work related, I promise. <laughs> um, They're quite pricey. Yes. Uh, uh, Bone, that, that's it. So we have time. You survived. Thank you yeah, well, so much for, me. For, for, for taking the time, uh, for hanging out with us. Um, folks watching at home or, or at work, or if you're like Captain Richard back in the day in, the, in your car on your lunch, uh, 318.2. Uh, it's just went, gone out to uh, uh, live servers uh, with a lot of, uh, you know, uh, with more bug fixes and more optimizations uh, uh, for the gameplay experience. Uh, it's also, uh, I can see from my, from my internal chats here, it also helped us uh, reveal a couple uh, malicious queries on the back end and stuff, and the folks are working to, to fix that stuff up. So like I said, have these things fix things and have these things reveal things that need to be fixed. Uh, so that's, that's currently underway. Uh, I understand there might be a, a Xeno threat sometime soon. I don't have any specific data. Yeah. Yeah. I worked on it, I made it. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe we should leave the mic up next time. We'll talk about leaving the mic up. But there's a Xeno threat event happening sometime soon. Keep an eye out on the RobertSpaceIndustries.com website and socials uh, for details on that. And then remember, of course, uh, ISC returns from its quarterly hiatus uh, next week with an episode dedicated entirely to the new Loraville that's coming online uh, with uh, the upcoming Alpha 319. Uh, it, this, you, see a little, you saw a little bit of it uh, out the window today, and during our intermission, it looks amazing. Uh, the, 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 the Montreal folks are just killing it, as are the folks in uh, Frankfurt who worked on the lighting and the atmosphere. The light and the atmosphere really set this thing off now. Uh, the whole sky is like burned. It's, it's so cool. It's so cool. Check that out next week on ISC. Uh, for this show, Star Citizen Live, uh, that was Ed, that was Elliot, this was uh, Bone, I'm Jared. Take care, everybody. We'll see you all here next week.